stuck on a word problem and don't know where to start? Well, look no further. Here are five tips for a better math score on the PSAT. Tip number one is short and sweet. Use Desmos. You have a beautiful gift with Desmos where you can pretty much solve a good amount of these problems without having to do any math at all if you know how to use the right tools on Desmos. So let's talk about this problem here. 3y equals 15 and negative 2x plus y equals 21. The solution to the given systems of equations is xy. What is the value of x minus y? Now, we could go through all of the steps on how to solve a systems of equations problems, but you don't even have to know how to do any of those things because of Desmos. So we graph 3y equals 15 and negative 2x plus y equals 21. And again, we're looking for our intersection point. So we look right here, gray dot, and yep, we've got negative 8 comma 5. So I'm going to write for myself negative 8 comma 5 on my scratch paper, come back and do that last tiny little bit of math there, which is our x value minus our y value. Negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. There you go. Easy as pie. Tip number two is don't rely on mental math. It's not worth it. Use your scratch paper. Use your calculator as much as you need. No one's grading you on whether or not you're good at mental math. They just need you to get to the right answer. So let's look at this example here. If negative 2x times x minus 3 minus 4 times negative 5x equals ax squared plus bx, what is AB? We need to figure out what these constants are. So I know your instinct is, I want to isolate for A and B. Don't think of it like that. Anytime you're working with more than two variables, you want to think of this as two separate equations. So I know that you could probably do this distribution in your head, but don't. It's not worth it. Take it one step at a time and make sure you really are careful because we're dealing with four negative signs here. So our signs are going to change a little bit. So if we distribute, we've got negative 2 x times x is x squared plus 6x plus 20x equals ax squared plus bx. Now I can simplify this a little by combining like terms. So 20 plus 6 is 26x. And then we got negative 2x squared equals ax squared plus bx. Now remember what I said about splitting this up left to right. So we're not going to isolate a variable. We're just comparing our left equation to our right equation. x squareds, as I would call them, are negative 2x squared and ax squared. And our regular x's are 26x and bx. Cancel out those x's. And we've got b equals 26 and a equals negative 2. And what is 26 times negative 2? Well, we're not going to try to do that in our head when we have our friend Desmos. And we get negative 52, which is our answer. So that's the value of working through all of this on paper. We don't want to get our negatives mixed up. As we're working through this, signs are very important to get to this last answer. Tip number three, use your reference sheet. This lovely reference sheet on the PSAT gives you one, two, three, four, five volume equations, area and circumference of a circle, area of a rectangle, area of a triangle, Pythagorean theorem, and the special right triangles, as well as these degrees of arcs, radians of arcs, and the sum of the measures and degrees of the angles in a triangle. So at any point, any of these could pop up, and they're really useful to help you get through some of these geometry problems. So let's look at this one. A triangle with angle measures 30, 60, and 90 has a perimeter of 18 plus 6 root 3. What is the length of the longest side of the triangle? All right, so the first thing I am going to do here is I am going to make myself a triangle. Now, it does not have to be a perfect triangle, mine is not. It's just for us to reference. So we know that the angles are 30, 60, and 90. Okay, so my 90 degree angle is gonna be a nice little square here, yes. 30 and 60, it doesn't quite matter where you label them. I'm gonna label them as close to the second largest and smallest that I can. And I know that this perimeter is 18 plus six root three. 
Let's say I don't quite remember how to figure out anything else, but I know that there are a good amount of triangles on my reference sheet. So I head over there and I look through the triangles area. Doesn't help me. Pythagorean theorem could help me eventually. Special right triangles. Ah, 30, 60, 90. So I see that opposite of my 30 is x, opposite of my 90 is 2x, and opposite of my 60 is x root 3. So x, 2x, x root 3. Still not a ton of numbers, but I'm getting somewhere. Now I also am going to annotate what my question's asking me. So the length of the longest side of the triangle. I know that that is opposite of the largest angle, which is 90 degrees here. So 2x is going to be my longest side. So if the only thing I have is perimeter, I can use my 1, 2, 3 sides to try to get x. Because if I can solve for x, then I can solve for my 2x. So x plus x root 3 plus 2x equals 18 plus 6 root 3. Now I already see that x and 2x can combine. So we have 3x plus x root 3 equals 18 plus 6 root 3. So excitingly enough, I can pull an x out of this. So x times 3 plus root 3 equals 18 plus 6 times root 3. So now my left side has an x pulled out of it with 3 plus root 3 getting multiplied. So if we can figure out a way to get this same setup of a number multiplying into three plus root three on the right side, we'd be in really good shape. So let's see, what can we get? 18 and six share a common factor of six. They also share a common factor of three and two. But if we divide by six, we'd get that three and that one right where we want them. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna pull a six out and then 3, 18 divided by 6 is 3, 6 divided by 6 is 1, we don't need that 1 there, it's implied, root 3 equals x times 3 plus root 3. So with our same constants rule we were using before, we can compare these two, these will cancel out, and x equals 6, but our problem's not done yet because we are looking for the longest side of the triangle. Now, I know from geometry that the biggest angle is opposite the biggest side. But also, we can compare this ratio and notice that root 3 is less than 2. So automatically, this is going to be our biggest side, even if we didn't remember that rule. So 2 times our x value, which is 6, equals 12. And there you go. Couldn't have done it without our handy-dandy reference sheet. Tip number 4 is back solve. So what does that mean? All that means is we are going to use our answer choice to help us out here. So let's read this question. A sample of frogs is studied for their color variation. If 12 frogs are found to have red tinted skin, and this number makes up 6% of the sample, how many total frogs are in the sample? We could jump through some hoops using this 12 and 6% to try to figure out a total number of frogs, but we don't have to because we're given our answer choices. So all we have to do is multiply these by 6%, which is 0.06 as a decimal, and see which one gets us to 12. So I put in these four answers, and you can clearly see that obviously 200 is going to get us to the 12. And there we go. Use your answers and save yourself a lot of headache. And our final tip is tip number five, which is use your givens. So let's look at this word problem here. During a month, Morgan ran R miles at 5 miles per hour and biked B miles at 10 miles per hour. She ran and biked a total of 200 miles that month, and she biked for twice as many hours as she ran. What is the total number of miles that Morgan biked during the month? So miles biked is what we're looking for here. You'll notice that as I'm reading, I'm already going ahead and underlining my givens, which I can parse out because I know that variables and numbers are what I'm looking for here, and words like total. So we have a couple of relationships going. We have a rate or a speed of five miles per one hour for running, and we have a speed of 10 miles per one hour of 
biking. We also have a relationship between the total number of miles that she ran and biked. So the total between running, which is R, and biking, which is B, is 200. And the last part of this is that she biked for twice as many hours as she ran. So B hours is equal to two times R hours. So if the total number of miles biked is B, we can use that ratio of 10 miles per hour to solve for hours. So total number of miles biked divided by the rate per hour should give us the number of hours. And if that feels confusing to you, just give it some arbitrary numbers, right? So if B was maybe 30 miles and we wanted to figure out how many hours she biked, then we would have to divide that by 10 and we'd know it'd be three hours. So if those steps get tricky, just give yourself a couple of arbitrary numbers to see that relationship. So now we know that this number of hours can be shown in B over 10. And the same thing with R can be shown as R over 5. So B over 10 is equal to 2 times R over 5, which means B over 10 is equal to 2R over 5, because we can think of this as 2 over 1, a little fraction multiplication there. So whenever we have equivalent fractions, we're going to cross multiply. So 5B is equal to 20R. So B is equal to 20 divided by 5 is 4R. So now we have a relationship between B and R. So we go back to our B plus R equals 200. We do a little substitution with B equals 4R. So I'm going to substitute 4R for B. 4R plus R is 5R. And we want to isolate R. And R equals what's 20 divided by 5? 4. Make sure to add that extra 0, 40. But we're looking for miles bikes. So we got to go back and do one final equation here, which is B plus 40 equals 200. So therefore, B equals what's 200 minus 40? 160. If that feels difficult, always use Desmos. And there we go. D. So just from this one paragraph, we were able to build at least five different equations. So whenever you're reading these word problems, think, how can I build equations? What is equaling each other? What's the relationship between all of these variables? And that will set you up for success. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope those tips helped. If you're really serious about raising your PSAT score, click the link down below to speak to one of our advisors and get $200 off your first tutoring package.